We are back, baby, with more JoJo Bizarre Adventures Go and Win. Oh, my God. I'm like, yes, yeah, last week I was looking forward to it, and all of a sudden, no, it was just a freaking recap. A freaking recap. But you know what? I'm like, okay, you can bring them JoJo, let them create their opening. How do I feel about the opening? I feel like it spoils too much. The thing about JoJo opening is that they do spoil, but it's not a spoil unless you read the manga so you know what's going on. This one, it feels like you, you can tell what's going to happen and stuff like that. So therefore, it's not as enjoyable. It doesn't feel that creative. It's like they're just showing you what's going to happen instead of doing some very interesting formation like they did back in with Diamonds Unbreakable. You know, the symbolism, the foreshadowing, the openings. It was a very unique artistic way. This time it's like they're just blowing it in your face this time. And I'm like, I really don't care much for it, you know? I really don't. So I was hoping to be a more interesting way if they would do it, but I guess not. So until then, I'm like, okay, okay. I do like the song. Not as good as Fighting Gold. Fighting Gold was just, yeah, man, that was nice. This one's, it's okay. And I realized a lot of animes do that, you know, where the first opening of the season is good, and then you get the second part, and it's like, it's okay, you know, it's okay. It takes a while to get used to, you know, but other than that, it's okay. Now, getting on started, though, so, um, Bruno and the team have finally made their decision to stay in Venice, and to find out what their next move is, by taking a little lunch break. They have to get their thoughts sorted out, find the resolve, which they did last episode, but now they understand what to do next. The main thing is to find the boss's identity and take him out. Even if it does cost of Tris being at risk, but she's okay with it too. She wants to discover who she is. She's tired of all these secrets and her father trying to kill her. So she wants to, you know what, screw it. We're going to find everything out if it kills her. And she actually gives them a very helpful clue. She remembers Trish 15 years ago. Her mom met the father and he didn't give her a name. So this dude, just this woman who sleeps with a guy she wouldn't know a name to or anything like that. Well, and again, I guess that does happen in today's world as well, but it's still pretty stupid when you think about it. So they have to go to Sauderia because they believe that is his hometown. Even though the guy is known to erase everything about him. Because this guy wants to be keep top secret. He don't want no one knowing anything of his past, his identity, nothing. But he's going to destroy even any blood relative, just in case. However, you never be too careful. You can never tell you might have dropped something from the past that will lead you into, it'll bite you in the future. So that something could be in South Area. So I'm guessing that the boss is going to let Bruno and the gang to reach there. So he's going to sell his, um, his elite guard, even though um, he didn't really expect their betrayal. He thought these were some loyal members. So the betrayal of everyone was just, you know, on second notice. So he had to have time to really prepare, but still, so not all the elite guard can come on together and fight Bruno and the gang. So it will put some less stress on them, but nonetheless, they're going to be on their tail. So it's best for them to come up with strategy to defend themselves. But hey, this is JoJo. These stands will come out for day by day, and they're going to face them and find some way to outsmart their opponents. Because that's just how JoJo works, you know? And today's stand is two stands, actually. And um, if you haven't seen this since Grateful Dead and Beach Boys, today we're doing it with Clash. And um, yeah, it was Clash and Talking Head. They did Crush, which, hey, fine, Crush is okay to use, but Clash is the original name for the fish stand. In a way, it reminds me of that one stand from Diamonds Unbreakable against the criminal where he has stand to control water, move on water, but this one can move freely in all kinds of liquid. So, now our needs to be in a place where there's no liquid. And then finally, there is... Um, that other stand, which I just said, Talking Head, yes, Talking Head's the name of stand, and that stand works is by simply, it'll get inside your, on your tongue, within your mouth, and you'll say the exact opposite of what you're trying to do. Oh, you're on there for a second, holy crap. <laughs> Anyways, it's a very tricky stand, so Narachai can't explain what he's trying to say or do to tell Joe 
he's being attacked. But these stands, in my opinion, aren't that impressive. They really aren't. There's a lot of flaws to these stands right here. Yes, it takes the two members who are controlling these stands to work together to make it very challenging to stop. But when you think about it, it's very trivial. It really is. The stand don't have that much of a big threat. Like, you see something strange like that, you will stay away from liquids. Not a lot of people are near liquids all the time. So that kind of stand can be that dangerous, you know? For instance, the room I'm in right now, there is no trace of liquids whatsoever in this room. The member is saying, can't touch me. And of course, neither can Talking Head get to me neither. So the stand seems like you have to be outdoors when it's raining or something, you know? You got to be near some liquid. And you can travel that long distance kind of stand. Very interesting. But nonetheless, it's not that impressive. So I'll be honest, despite I am amused about how they're getting themselves out of the situation, I'm not that really excited about these two stands, you know? It, it just feels trivial, you know? Like, come on, the, the Assassins, the beginning of the Assassins had a more interesting stand and ability powers than this. This seems a little bit, you know, seems really trying to push the envelope here. And can't really see myself getting behind, but not the fact... Um, is up the course journal to help Naruto discover what is really happening to him. And they're very close to finding out until Juno got attacked. So I guess it's up to somebody else. Nonetheless, um, I did laugh about that one part where Naruto and um, Mista beat up the dude who was trying to um, hustle Naruto, but they beat the crap out of him. And I love how Bakio is sitting there drinking his wine. I thought he was like, oh, you guys talking it off. But instead, he puts the wine down and just starts being a bum too. <laughs> Oh my god, these, these guys are full of character, and I really do like them. <laughs> like, I respect a Bakio of all people. They just, they just sit there watching wine and just like, you know what, fuck it, let's have a good time. Just start just kicking the dude. <laughs> uh, that was literally the best scene in this episode, man. Um, the, oh, the outro was pretty good too. Not as good as the first one here, and not definitely not as good as Joe Joe's Bizarre Adventures. Diamond is Unbreakable's outro. You know, I like that. You know how you see the characters moving in and stuff like that. It was very interesting, and the opening would evolve by the events and characters are introduced through the show. This one is okay. You know, it has that theme to it underwater, which they've already did, but they really love pushing that underwater theme to it. Probably to do with the country of Italy and stuff, but nonetheless, it's it's okay. Like I said, it's, it's not really good as freaking you. And it's not as good as fighting gold, but nonetheless, it's okay. It's it's one of those things that most anime go through, where their second and outro and intro are just not as good as the first one, and that's just the thing that seems to happen a lot. Except for an index, index season three's old intro is just out of this freaking world. I love it. War, baby. But that's all I got for that video. I hope you guys enjoyed some JoJo. It's good to have some JoJo back. So now we see the crew moving on. See what will happen next in their crazy adventure. Well, bizarre adventure. Anyway, this is all I got for this video. I hope you guys like it. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon so you get notified. Macro Man signing out.